Amen. Our help comes from the Lord with faith, heaven, and earth. He will give us what we need to be in the right spiritual place. The three men did not become his disciples. The harvest is right, but the labors are few. Right. Amen. But to be, the Lord is looking for heart right labors to go out in the vineyard and to compel the people to come in to be his disciples. Amen. And so that's what these three men, they weren't ready. And then some of us, we're not ready to be disciples. But as we hear what how it mentions, we are learning to be disciples. Amen. So when we learn to become a disciple, then we will take all that stuff and say, uh, just need that stuff and press towards the mark and go out and compel other people to come in. Amen. And so... Jesus felt that what he taught his disciples and the multitude had was done had done little for them. They didn't want to listen. You know, what he taught and stuff he kind of felt like what he taught them. They, he, he, they, he said that they lacked power and love and, and discipline, which reads God's spirit. Uh -huh. This is why he told the man. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Uh -huh. He will tell them that it does not matter what you had or did before, but if you follow me, things will get better. With God, all things are possible. Uh -huh. Like some of us today, these three men found themselves in a place of spiritual homelessness. Mm -hmm. Amen. We find sometimes we find our place, um, our spirits are are here, but then is not here. No. So our spirit is homeless. There's nowhere, our spirit has nowhere to lay his hand. Uh -huh. And then our spirit is just wandering out there. And then that's what homeless people do. They just wander out there in the world. But we want our spirit to be in the place of worship. And we want our spirit to have somewhere to lay his hand. But it doesn't matter what, it doesn't mean, because we are spiritually homeless sometimes, it doesn't mean that we're not saved. Yeah. Sometimes these situations just get in our way, and, and uh, we just don't know what to do sometimes, but God is there to provide for us. Yeah. Amen. He's going to provide a place to lay our hands. Yeah. But sometimes we let people and situations determine the state of our spirituality. Yes. Amen. And sometimes the situation we face can hold us in poverty. Uh -huh. And then we don't want to be in poverty. We are some of we what are some of the situations that can hold us in poverty? Like I said earlier before, the economy. Uh -huh. Because we don't have enough money to to do what we need to do, we're going to be in poverty. And we don't know that we can look to the hills for which come with our help. Because God is the one that provides for us. Amen. He gives us what we need. We don't have to give in to the world of this economy, babe. The God will provide for us. And another thing is our job. We may think that we go on our jobs and people are just going around doing life today and we, we think our jobs are... Our jobs are important. We need them to live and survive. But that's not the only thing we need. We need Jesus to live and survive. Amen. 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 That is, our jobs just provide our income, our source of income to live. And then what we do with that source depends on you and God. Amen. Amen. So we don't want our jobs to hold that, that we are so much into our jobs and our jobs and we're going to work and work and work and work. Don't get me wrong about this thing. Man who doesn't work doesn't eat. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we need to just not let our jobs hold us captive. Amen. To where we can't come out and worship the Lord. Come out and spend time with Him. Go, go out and compel the people to come in. Sometimes our family yes. hold us poverty. Amen. Because, you know, because they don't do what we do or we don't do what they do. We think that, well, 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 well they do what this. And, you know, we are family. We did grow up in the same place, but, you know, you have to grow up for yourself. Uh -huh. Amen. We can't let family, we can't let friends, amen, friends hold us poverty and captivity, hold us homeless, because if we are not together with going Meshing together with people who are going to the same place you go, they can hold you captive. Yeah. Yeah. 
they say in this so time, our churches can hold us in poverty. Amen. We we sometimes we let the people in the church determine how we feel. Amen. And uh, and uh, we don't want the people to send us to hell. Amen. But we got to go on for ourselves. Amen. Whatever is going on in the church, we don't want to look over it. But we want to we want to bring it to the forefront of the church and to the pastor and everything. But don't just let anything just happen in the church. Let the people sway you because of this and that, whatever. These are going to go on in the church. These are going to go on, but don't let that separate you. And then, and then sometimes we're at school that, that uh, I, I'm kind of um, guilty of this myself because I'm in school now and, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I, I say now that uh, I don't, uh, well, I don't have time to read the word or I don't have time to do this and that because I have my schoolwork to do. But then again, I don't have any really to do my schoolwork because I get it done. Amen. I get it done when it's time to get it done. Amen. The pastor always told me, don't always um, study your word because you got to speak somewhere. But we have to learn how to keep ourselves covered with the word and time management. Pastor always talks about time management in a roundabout way. We need to take the time out to do the things that we need to do. 